Welcome to another fun fly fishing video from Fly Fish Food. My name's Cheech. This video is not really going to be that cheesy. We have an awesome fly though. This fly is a slider that has kind of some parts from an old British airplane. You got to check it out. That's all I'm saying. All right, this little Concorde fly, as we were starting to create this, um, the head would almost dig in so much that it would make the fly kind of do a somersault as you were stripping. So what I started to do is I'm gonna take my hook and I'm gonna put a little keel weight. So that's the first thing we're gonna do on this. Just take some like 025, 030, whatever, and I'm putting, I think, seven wraps. Two, three, four five, six, seven, seven wraps. I'm just going to wiggle that off and then I'll just leave it right there and take some thin resin and just coat those wraps. You can coat them with thread, but you're going to burn up almost a whole spool of thread trying to cover it up. So this method works just fine. Just kind of get it all soaked in there. Give it a little bit of a rotation and cure it. Oh, see. Okay, so the keel weight is, is critical on this fly. It, it makes it so it doesn't roll even if you strip it really fast. So that's kind of a cool feature of a, of a keel weight as well. All right, I'll just start my thread. I'm just using some, you know, 140-ish denier. Just something that you can put a little bit of pressure on. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, the tail on this one is going to be marabou. And... I'm going to use two different colors together um, and I'm just going to pull you know a, a chunk of marabou like this maybe clean out the the bottom of it and then I'm just going to tie it in just like that so it's kind of sparse when you do it that way but I'm going to use two clumps so we'll be good and I'm going to make it long-ish um, you can use really whatever hook you want on this. I'm using uh, an Arex. If you want to know the model, click the link in the description. That's where the recipe is listed. So, I don't know. When I open the bag, sometimes I uh, forget to double check what the number said. All right. So, I'm going to do the same thing with a piece of dark olive. So, this is just ginger and olive marabou. A very good color combo together. And then I'll just lift those up, take my thread forward a little bit. Trap those down just to kind of create a level body. And I'll cut those off and then just kind of clean this up. All right, so the bulk of this fly is a new product from Hairline called Spectrum Glimmer Chenille. It's really, really cool. It's brown, but it kind of is just kind of clear. It's transparent with a whole bunch of flash in it. It's got a little bit of like opalescent stuff, but a super cool material that I've been playing with on my streamers lately. So I'll just get that started. You can really make sure all these are gonna point the right way, but I'm just gonna take it forward with the rotary style, and then I can comb that out if I need to. That actually didn't work too bad. We're going to brush those fibers back and they'll kind of all comb back once we tie materials in. So that's how we're looking so far. All right, we're going to build kind of, what are they called? Just little wing side pieces to this. I don't even know how to describe it, but I'm just going to... Fins? Fins? These are not fins, Brigham. Is it a, is it a making a minnow? It's not mimicking a minnow. Maybe sometimes, but I'm not calling them fins just because you said it. Sorry for the disruption, guys. Unfortunately, I got to work with Brigham instead of Spencer today. Anyway, so instead of cutting those, I'm just going to lay those on the side of the, the fly and just tie those in. And if you need to, you can use the, the feather to kind of adjust how you want it. So they kind of just create a little tent or canopy, something that fins don't do, Brigham. So that's what I'm going for. 
We'll trim those off. Flanks. Flanks. I don't know. Brigham. Do minnows have flanks? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, you said no. it's Your argument just changed. Oh my gosh. All right. So there. The, the feathers are set how I want them. Now I'm going to grab a big feather from this hen saddle. And by the way, this is a, a hairline grizzly dyed olive hen saddle. Really nice, soft feathers. So I'll just grab one of the larger feathers and prepare that one. And that's going to be a collar for this. All right, so, and this is just the back half of this fly. It's an articulated fly. So I'm gonna fold those hackle fibers over with every turn. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect, but it's always fun to try to get it that way. All right, so here we've done six or seven turns or so. Before I pull that off, I'm just gonna pull all those fibers back and create a head. And then I could take this little excess piece and just break it right off. So there we have our back half of the fly. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of super glue. I did, I pulled a little too hard and my whip finish broke, that's fine. All right, so back half is done. Yes, you could fish it just like that, but we're not going to. Um, the front half is one of these, uh, it's an A-Rex hook with the bent front. Um, so you see, you know, a lot of streamers tied with that bent part hanging down. So we're gonna build one out of that. But before we get started, same thing, we're gonna put a keel weight on this one, about nine turns. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll break it off and seal that down the same way we did the other one, just with some thin resin. Use the resin that you like. Brig, resins are like Cajun seasonings. They're all pretty good. But if you use too much, you can ruin your meal. Okay. Brigham's nodding his head, I can assure you. All right. We'll cure that. And now we'll put it back in the vise the right way. All right. So we're going to just dress this hook. Um, and this will have a deer hair head. However, I'm not going to, you know, pack a bunch of deer hair. It's just going to be slider style. There's only going to be deer hair on one side of the hook. And so to achieve that, we've got to add a little bit of uh, something like a prop to, to push it up. Okay, so I've got the, this large size bead chain eye. This is really not going to add any weight to the fly that's significant. I'm just going to put it up at the head so it, it's a prop to seat my, my head when I tie the, the deer hair in. You'll see what I'm talking about. One thing I have noticed is the outside um, hole on these eyes is pretty rough. And so when you're, you know, figure eighting your thread, sometimes it catches. So I just take a little nail file and just kind of smooth those off. I usually don't have a nail file, but Brig left his purse on the counter, so I grabbed it. Okay, so once I have that set, I'm gonna come all the way up here and I'm just gonna tie this in really close to the eye. I already did that. So then this thread will try to catch on that painted eye. So just be careful. Take your time. Once you have that tied in, I'm going to flip it around um, because I want that to kind of just sit right next to the eye. It's just going to catch that head. And you can adjust this around. 
Apparently I didn't put it close enough. There we go. So that's how close we're looking for that hook or for the, the eyes on that. At this point, we'll tie in some articulation wire, bead long, um, Senyo's intruder wire, whatever you want. And I just tie it in with a little bit going forward so I can double it over. And I'm just going to wrap this back all the way down to where that keel weight starts. So you can see I'm wrapping it down the bend a little bit. The further back on your hook that this wire comes out, the least chance you're going to have at fouling. So um, wrap it down the bend. The fish don't care. And once you have a bunch of materials on, you'll forget that you made it made it uh, look a little weird. All right. So to put that on, I'm going to take a six mil articulation bead or a 3D bead put that on, grab the back half, slide this through, and then uh, thread it right back through the bead. And we're ready to tie that one in. Don't, don't cinch this down too tight. You want it to move, and that bead needs to sit down off the back of that keel weight. So that's a good amount of, of uh, distance right there. I could maybe go a little bit more or a little bit shorter, I'll actually do that. So if you need to, to, to shorten it, just grab the wire. Man, my brute strength has tightened this down really tight. Right, Brig? Nope. Nope. All right, just a little bit there. All right, so once I have it here, I'm just gonna wrap my, my thread up. I'm gonna trim this one to the roughly the same length as the other. And now I'm gonna fold both of those back over. You don't really need to go through the hook eye. Um, with this many thread wraps, it will hold. Uh, I've caught a lot of really big fish on, on this style. Um, also, right where we cut it, if you put too much pressure on your thread, there's a little sharp point, so just beware it could cut. All right. Now for the front half. So for the front half, you know, I, I used ginger and marabou, but ginger's the color that's gonna go on the bottom. And so I'm just going to take a piece of ginger and I'm going to tie that in just to kind of cover up the gap about that far. I'll clean that up a little bit and I'm going to tie it in about right here. Right there. Okay, once that's tied in, just wrap that forward just like we did. The last piece, we'll trim her off and prep it for some more of that awesome glimmer chenille. Let's see. All right. So we're going to tie that in. And I'm going to I'm going to wrap this to about the point where the hook starts to curve down. So I'm trapping a few fibers, that's fine. I can brush those out. All right. I always tell people, it's okay if your fly's messy at this point, as long as it looks clean when you finish it up. All right, so you can see the program. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna put in two more uh, little feather feelers that are definitely not fins. And let's see, I'm going to try to find a, a couple of them that are longer and skinnier. There are all kinds of feathers on this thing. It's a pretty cool little product. All right. So I found two feathers. We're going to just put those down the side again, tie the whole feather in. You can dress them and everything, but that just takes time and it really doesn't make a difference on this fly. So tie it in one at a time. They'll kind of create a, a wing over the back like that. Brig, do fish have wings? Dorado do. Dorado do, because they, they drink Red Bull. All right, so um, we'll add another big piece and wrap a, a collar. All right, and on this one, again, I'm going to fold those fibers back a little bit, try to keep it 
Looking good, looking nice. We're just building in a little bit of, you know, movement to the fly. When this is paused, these natural materials will continue to move as, as the as the flies stop. So they just kind of sit and breathe in the water. Uh oh. Brigham, your bad luck. That just unraveled on me. But if I folded it right, I should be able just to wrap it right back up. And boom. All right. Brigham's bad luck today. All right. So here we go. We're, we're done with that part. Um, this is going to have a deer hair head. But I'm going to add in one more element of movement to it. So I'm going to prop the fly up in the vise because I want this part of the hook to be fairly flat now. So that's my working surface. Um, I'm going to take one more piece of this uh, ginger marabou. So I'm going to tie a piece of marabou going over the top of the fly, almost the whole length of the front hook. And you want to make sure that you don't put any thread right here right behind those eyes. That's where I'm going to tie in my my deer hair and the way that I trim this head that it has to be seated down really really tight or else you'll cut uh, the thread that you use it to trim the deer or to, to tie in the deer hair. So anyway we're ready for that. Again I'm using 140 denier and I'm going to get rid of that. We are tying in 200 denier gel spun polyethylene GSP. This is really, really strong thread. Um, 200 denier because I need to put a lot of pressure on this when I cinch it down. And if the thread's too thin, it will actually cut through the deer hair. So restarted that 200 denier right behind those uh, B chain eyes. And now, um, this is the hair stacker that I use and I'm going to use deer belly hair. So I've got olive and tan. Tan is kind of a gingery color and uh, we'll, we'll make a two-tone head. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll try to slow down and, uh, and see if we can get this to turn out right. Okay, so of the olive chunk I, I cut off about that much of the hair. Now when you have this hair, it's critical that you comb out the under fur. So if I comb out the under fur, it's going to pull out some under or shorter fibers as well. A little bit of static. So you can see all that crap came out. That under fur is the stuff that won't allow your hair to align properly. So with that, I'm going to stick that in here, align the tips. And when I pull those out of this, I usually stick my finger in and just kind of give it a nice little push, grab the hair, and this hair is going to sit right here, right on top of the hook. And it looks like I'm tying, tying it in way longer than I should, but that's just kind of uh, how this, this hair works. It flares so much, it kind of almost shrinks it. So I'm going to lay it down right here, grab that whole clump with, with one hand, and I'm going to make two loose wraps. So I have two loose wraps right on top. So as you can see, it looks like this. Now, as I pull my thread, I'm going to pull it to the to the forward or to the front of the fly, and I'm going to put my thumb down and push down, or probably just my index finger. The reason I do that is because it creates a little indent for me to put the other color. So if I do that quickly, I'm going to push down with my thumb and pull forward on the thread and now that's all tied in and it creates a little divot like this. Not impressive, I know. So just wait, let's get the other color in there. So we're going to do tan for the neck for the other color. We're going to take a clump that's about the same size. Sometimes the second clump I do a little bit smaller. And I'll brush it out just like I did the other one. Ew, look at that. That's nasty. Get out of here. We should make Brig tie with that. All right, so align the tips like we did last time. 
we need to have like some music going so we can have like a little rhythm to our stacking. Okay, so I've got the hair all prepped. It's ready to tie in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hair and I'm going to tie it in right on top. And it's going to sit right down in this little divot. So I'll just grab it with my, my off hand, lay it down, and I'm going to wiggle my thread. Let's see if I can angle this toward you. I'm going to wiggle my thread through the olive, come up over the tan, and do that twice. Try, to, try not to trap too many fibers as you do this. So here we are. We've got those all tied in like that. So all I'm going to do now is, with both fingers under the vise now, I'm just going to pull down and forward, and that hair is in there. And I mean in there. All right. One more thing we need to tie in before we're done. I'm going to put a little throat on this. I just used some STS trilobal dubbing um, for this one. All right. So I'm just going to get a, a chunk of the dubbing, print it all out, and then I'm going to tie that to the bottom of these eyes. Now this is this is not this is easier or more difficult than it looks. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to tie it around the barbell eye or the the bead chain eye, and I'll just kind of. Uh, tease out any of those fibers that get caught. The only reason I'm doing this is because it's a video and there's going to be some guys that you caught a fiber right there. Streamer fishing's not real fly fishing. Do they say that, Rig? I've never had people say that to me. Briggs tuned out. He doesn't care. He's a big time film editor now and he doesn't talk to me. <laughs> okay. All right. So instead of... Um, Instead of whip finishing or anything, I'm just going to put some super glue there and then trim my thread. So if, it, if I did that properly, you know, just a, a few turns of thread over the top of this, this red throaty material. And that's maybe a little long, so I'm just going to kind of come in here and trim it up a little bit. All right. So there we are. We have a finished fly. We just need to trim it. So... Before I trim a deer hair fly, I like to come in here with, with a comb to make sure that all the hair is sitting exactly where I want it. Um, if it's crossed up when you cut it, it can kind of look weird. All right, so I'm gonna take a brand new razor blade. And this should just be like a one cut type of deal where I'm just gonna, well, the main cut is anyway. I'm just going to stick the, the blade like this and without bending or anything I'm just going to move the blade straight back through the head. So let's see. I might have to wiggle it a little bit if it's really tight. So I'll choose an angle that's maybe not quite as tight as I want just to see how it's looking. I like that so I'm going to go tighter with the next cut. Yeah, that, that's looking about how I want it. So real tight off the beads. Look at it head on and make sure both sides are even. I always skimp on the far side. So once it's like this, just kind of put your put your ang or your razor at an angle like this and just trim off the sides real nice and easy. And now look at your head. That far side's still a little Still a little bit long. And then I, I, I like to round off the corners a little bit. Just a little, little. You can you can ruin these flies real fast by doing this. All right. So anyway, that's pretty much it. And so as you can see, the shape of the fly, that's why we call it the Concorde. If you don't know what the Concorde is, it's a British airplane. Um, our good buddies at Fulling Mill who will be producing this fly um, know all about it. So anyway, this is the Concorde slider. Um, it'll be in a bunch of different colors, but the way this swims in the water, um, you know, the head obviously digs, but because the keel weights, it's not gonna roll. It moves quite a bit in the water. So give it a try.
tie it in a whole bunch of different colors. There you have it.